Aloha and welcome to this week's edition of Business in Hawaii. I'm Dalen Yanagita and we are broadcasting live from the Think Tech Studios in downtown Honolulu. If you want to tune in live, we are at www.thinktechhawaii.com. While there, please subscribe to our programs and get on our mailing list. The theme of Business in Hawaii is to share with you stories of local businesses by local people. Our guests share with us their journey to building successful businesses right here at home. In the Think Tech studio today is Nathan Gyotoku, President of Junior Achievement of Hawaii. Nate, thank you so much for joining me today. Um, Junior Achievement of Hawaii is near and dear to my heart, as you know, and I would love for you to share um, all that's been going on with JA Hawaii. But before we do that, I know that you're a familiar face around town. Sure. And I would love for you to tell us what you've been up to. Well, thank you very much for having me today. Um, you know, and um, yeah, I'm with Junior Achievement of Hawaii, um, and I've start, I started there in uh, late April. And uh, prior to Junior Achievement, I was at Kupu, which is another uh, nonprofit here in Hawaii, which focused mainly on um, empowering young adults in, uh, to get jobs in conservation and sustainability work. Um, so while there, I learned a lot about nonprofits, especially running multiple programs. Um, and that plus my involvement with the Japanese community at the Japanese Cultural Center and the, the Junior Chamber of Commerce all kind of led me toward a career in nonprofit. Well, clearly also your passion for um, issues and work that focuses around our young people um, has, has been the center of what, what you do at, at Junior Achievement, but also what, while you're at Kupu. Um, I'd love for you to tell us about Junior Achievement of Hawaii. I mean, I know they've been around for, for some time, but since when and, and what's the evolution? Yeah, absolutely. So yes, my, my personal mission has always been to help Hawaii. And um, even when I was in the private sector, it was about helping my customers to be able to succeed so they can employ more people. Um, and when I dive, dove into nonprofit work, I kind of naturally went toward the youth, youth engagement part. And Junior Achievement's been around in Hawaii since 1957. Um, since 1957, we've um, impacted roughly 273,000 273, people, so a uh, quarter of a million people. In Hawaii have gone through JA and uh, over the years you know we've had a long-lasting impact a lot of our alumni are in the community now as business leaders um, and we, we continue to do the work so right now we're statewide um, on Kauai, Oahu, the Big Island and uh, this year we'll go, we'll go back to Maui and um, you know just we're out there um, working with businesses to volunteer and get into the classrooms and just get in front of students teaching them about economics, uh, personal finance, entrepreneurship, and uh, getting them ready to enter their career. So I know that a lot of those, those topics are within your grain. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're an entrepreneur. Pri prior to Kupu, sure. right, you, you yourself started up a business. And, and so I think that the connection between being an entrepreneur in Hawaii, being born and raised in Hawaii, sure. And the connection between junior achievement just just sparked your your passion for yeah, our mission. Right? Absolutely. So I, I do have a long history in entrepreneurship. My family's has they have always owned their own business, and um, you know part of what we do at JA is to empower young people to to have the tools to make that self determinative decision to do what they want, uh, whether it's to go into a career uh, working for someone or go off and start their own company. So a lot of that has, uh, that all folds into what we teach at JA. And it's about giving our youth the tools in order to, to determine their own path forward in the future. Um, for me, Hawaii is a very small business um, state. Um, our, largest, our largest employers are, are hotels or banks. Um, I mean, we don't have large corporations. So a lot of it will be people who are wanting to open up their own business and, and kind of have a small small business on their own. So I know that a lot of folks probably have heard of Junior Achievement, but what does is, what is Junior Achievement really do? So what we do is um, we actually are a volunteer organization. So our, our the key to our success is connecting community volunteers, mostly from businesses, and letting them, giving them the opportunity to enter our classrooms to go and teach the kids directly. So we don't actually do a lot of the teaching ourselves. We, we actually work and 
uh, recruit new volunteers, work with companies to get them to do, do some outreach, and then we go and provide the materials, provide the curriculum, which is all standards-based, so it fits well into public school. Um, and we provide the training to the volunteers, and then we match the volunteers with schools and get them out into the community. So really, the volunteers are the lifeblood of what we do. I think what's beautiful about uh, the curriculum uh, with Junior Achievement is that you folks are synced up with the Department of Labor, the U.S. Department of Labor, and as well at, uh, as um, the Department of Education here, I know that there's some, um, some partnerships there. Can yes, you tell us absolutely. about that? Absolutely. So, an advantage for JA is that we are in a national organization. So a lot of our curriculum is supported on a national level, uh, Department of Labor, Department of Education. Um, we adhere to pretty much every state's standards, whether they be Common Core or their own standards. Hawaii, we, we're switching to Common Core, so, but we adhere to that. Um, and you know what, what we try to do with the DOE here locally is to find opportunities, especially on the high school level, um, to kind of dive deeper and, and kind of connect um, partners with the right school. For instance, um, we're going to pilot a program in Kala Hill this year where we're trying to connect their engineering pathway to engineers. So we want the engineering firms to come and teach the classes, the work career readiness classes for those uh, engineering students so that the students get to interact with possible future employers or, or fellow employees and really get to know if that's the choice they want to make and if that field is right for them. So we want to connect them early and, and kind of build those relationships. So we're testing that out this year, and hopefully that'll, that'll expand in the future. Speaking of students, love to talk about your reach. Sure. Um, and I think we have a slide that'll uh, speak to that. Yeah, so in 2018, 2019, uh, we just finished, we wrapped up the school year, and. Uh, we reached 7,948 students across the state um, in Oahu, uh, East Hawaii, and on Kauai. Um, and the numbers are up there, 359 classes, 71 schools, 93% 93 of, of those schools are public schools, and of those, about one third, little over a third, were Title I schools. So uh, Title I schools are schools that um, qualify, uh, a majority or a percentage of their uh, students qualify for free or reduced lunch, lunches. Um, so they're typically in an economically disadvantaged position. So a lot of our work is in there, and we had over 500 volunteers. So those 500 volunteers put in hundreds of thousands of hours in the classroom. So our, our, reach, our reach is pretty wide, um, considering how small of a um, nonprofit we, we, we actually are. So the, school, the schools that participate in classroom programs with um, junior achievement, not necessarily Title I, right? No, not, not at all. So who can? Who can Anybody can participate. Um, so we encourage educators to go to our website, and they can actually request a program. Um, at that point, what we do, the process is we'll, we'll talk to the teacher, see what they're looking for. And then what, what we do after that is try to engage our volunteers and try to fill the space. If we can fill a volunteer, get a volunteer to fill that class, then we'll book the class and, and make that arrangement. If we cannot, then you know, we let the teacher know that hey, we're short on volunteers, so we, we cannot fill it. But the, the teachers are out there driving it. Um, we'd like to get, a, you know, we're trying to, we have programs from K to 12. So every grade could have a program. So we'd like to see it at some point where at a school, every grade has a JA program running. Um, so that's, that's what we're driving toward. You know, teaching today is probably easily one of the hardest jobs out there. Um, and it takes a tremendous amount of dedication and commitment from our teachers, um, bless their hearts, for educating our young people. And when Junior Achievement can come in and support them in, in their curriculum, yeah. it gives them an opportunity to take some time to think about themselves. Um, because can, can you explain to us how a classroom sure. looks. And I think we, we have a couple of slides um, to talk to as well. Yeah, so the, the community volunteers will actually come in and teach the class. So really, the teacher um, doesn't get a day off, but they get a little break. And they, you know, we do have the teachers usually helping our volunteers with classroom control and, and helping as, a, as an assistant. A lot of our volunteers, that's not their profession. So they're just as uncomfortable teaching the class 
But um, you know, we, we provide all of the materials. So all of that's included and free to the classroom. So all of these classes don't have to pay for any of the materials. We provide everything. We provide the volunteers the handbooks that they can just basically read through and, and the curriculum step by step. And um, I taught my own class one um, a few months ago. I taught some second graders, and, it, and it's it's great. It's a it's a great experience. I think for the kids, having a another voice um, gives them gives also gives them a mental break, and they're able to absorb because they're now talking to somebody different, um, and and you know they can deliver that message. Some of the programs that we run are multiple days, so for instance, that second grade class um, would have been about two or three. Uh, sessions of classes that I would have gone to um, so it, it does vary sometimes you can squish them all into an afternoon but um, it kind of depends uh, on the teacher but yeah so the teacher gets a, a short little break um, our community volunteers get to come into class and they get to actually empathize with the teacher and feel what it's like to be up in front of kids but also the kids get a different experience they get a secondary voice talking to them and they, they seem to like that and, um, and can absorb that well fantastic uh, so um, Junior Achievement of Hawaii works together with the, the teachers and the school to bring programming. So tell me about the different types of program. You said you provide programs from K through 12. Yes. I mean, are we talking financial education at kindergarten or how, how does that progress? Absolutely. So we do provide uh, classes from K to 12. Um, every grade level kind of has a different uh, topic. And on the elementary school level, we really talk about basic economics. Um, we talk about how, what are companies, um, what is supply and demand, um, what is being an employee mean, what is paying your taxes, what, what, you know, how do you keep police, how do we afford police? Well, we have to pay taxes. So we kind of cover all these basic, basic community level uh, economics with elementary school uh, children. And then as they get older, we start to kind of um, specialize them in, in a few different ways. So our main three pillars are entrepreneurship, financial literacy, and work readiness. So as they get older, those programs kind of dive in deeper on specific items. Um, so depending on, and it really depends on the schools and what the community needs are. Um, we're hearing a lot of community um, requests for work readiness and entrepreneurship. Um, so it seems to be, those seems to be the classes that the, the high schools are requesting or the middle schools are requesting more geared toward entrepreneurship and toward career readiness. So it's the teachers or the schools that determine at what point they're ready to talk about career readiness or entrepreneurship, yep. not necessarily what is prescribed? Yeah, I, and, or it can work the other way too. It can work both ways. Um, I think for us, so certain levels um, of our programming are really geared toward second graders. And, you know, we have a program called the Global Marketplace, which would be more geared toward, toward sixth graders because they understand um, things are different in a different country and they can kind of understand global economics a little better. Um, and then when we get to the high school level, it's a lot deeper and it's doing problem solving, conflict mediation, communication as well as basic, you know, balancing your checkbook and, and being fiscally responsible. So it, it varies, but um, the way the curriculum is structured is that they, it really is geared toward specific age levels. But we do let the schools kind of drive to us and say, like, hey, we heard about this program. Nice. You know, we want to try this out at our school. So that's kind of how the career read, uh, success program came up with Kaleo. Nice. Uh, we wanted to, we were looking for a partner as far as the CTE work, career technical education work. They, they were ready to get involved and we're looking to launch sometime this year. Nice. I know that Junior Achievement of Hawaii has been very active with its community partners. And when we come back from break, I would love for you to share with us how that involvement looks um, and how far it reaches. We are going to take that short break. This is Business in Hawaii. Aloha. I'm Stan Osterman, Stan the Energy Man, every Friday here on Think Tech Hawaii. If you're really interested in finding out what's going on in energy, especially here in Hawaii, but also all the way around the world, and especially if it has to do with hydrogen, look into Stan Energy Man every Friday, 12 o'clock, Think Tech Hawaii. Be there. Aloha. Konnichiwa. Think Tech Hawaii ga Nihongo de okuri shite imasu. Konnichiwa Hawaii. Host no Kunisei Yukari desu. Maishu, kakushu getsuyobi, 2ji kara desu ne, Nihongo de 日本語で活躍されていらっしゃる 
ハワイのいろいろな方をお招きしてショーをゲストショーをお届けしていますぜひご覧になってくださいウィノーダー、ジュニアチーフェンズ、アソーヴェーアクティブ、インデコミュニティ、ウィッツ、リリー、シグニフィケント、サポーターズ。テレスアバッツ、アマヴィア、コミュニティ、パートナーズ。アブソルティ、ソー、ビーン、アファイナンシャル、リテシー、オーガニゼーション、ウィハヴ、グレート、サポート、フォー、マラーヴァー、ロコ、バンク、ソー、アバンク、ホワイ、アメリカン、サービス、セントル、パシフィック、ファーストワイン、バンク、ウィッツ、サポーターズ、アバス、ファイナンス、ファクターズ、アソー、サポーター。Regular companies,、uh, people who are companies that are、um, now starting to、um, encourage their employees to get out into the、uh, community to volunteer. So, we have other partners like Servco and Alexander and Baldwin. And so, we're always building new partners.、Um, but for us, yeah, we, we definitely am always looking for more companies to partner with. We, we like to take a company approach because then at that point, companies can kind of、um, self organize and say, okay, well, We like this school, or we want to take care of this school. So, you know, let's, let's concentrate our efforts at a school in our neighborhood or, you know, in a certain area.、Um, and、uh, it allows us to also organize our volunteers a little better when we have like one point of contact at, say, a bank. And we can shoot them an email and say, here are our, the open classes that we need help with, and they can help us fill. So, our community partners are very, very important to us. And, and we have statewide, because we operate statewide, we also have partners on Kauai. Partners in, in Hilo,、um, looking to build out more partners on Maui and, and、um, on the west side of, of the Big Island, too. So, as we expand, we're, we're always looking for new partnerships.、Uh, so, I also know that,、um, and because this is another organization that's near and dear to my heart, that you partner with SHRM, and、yes. that's the Society of Human Resources Managers. And they really key into the work readiness piece. Yes. Tell us about some of the work that you're going to do with, with SHRM. Yeah, so SHRM is part of that Kala Hill pilot. So、um, SHRM is a big partner for us.、Um, obviously, you know, HR, every company has HR. So、um, being associated and being connected to SHRM really gets our foot in at, at a lot of companies, and they have a really large membership. So with SHRM, what we're doing is we're kinda, we kind of section off the project. Uh, with Kala Hill. Kala Hill will provide us the students and the, and the place to teach them. We'll provide the content, and then we're working with SHRM to help us find the volunteers. So basically, we're, we're kind of divvying up the responsibilities as best as we can. But, but we find, we're finding that some of these associations like SHRM、um, are really important.、Um, we're looking at building out other ones with different、uh, professional organizations as well. Um, but yeah, it gets us into the door. It helps us recruit new volunteers. It, it organizes us better. It allows us to be,、uh, still stay small on a, on a, a staff size, but still increase our reach、uh, really, really quickly. Let's talk a little bit more about your approach.、Sure. I know that you brought a slide with you today to talk to that. Sure. So our approach is pretty simple.、Um, like I mentioned earlier, our three main、uh, pillars that we, our pathways that we're concentrating on are entrepreneurship. Financial literacy and career readiness. So,、uh, as I mentioned, we have programs for kindergarten all the way to 12th grade.、Um, what we do is we kind of view the kindergarten, the K to 5 programming as foundational. So, they're very broad, very basic, teaches、uh, kids the very basic stuff,、um, including like needs versus wants. So, hopefully, simple things like that. But we find that those things lay a foundation so that as they get older, Um, depending which way they want to go, or like where we're approaching it, with what the community kind of feels that they need,、um, they can kind of, we can have programs that fit into either one or two, or one, a couple of them fit into all three of the different pathways.、Um, but that way we can kind of focus our efforts a little better, especially like if a school really wants to go toward career readiness and they're, they're really trying to build out their CTE platform, which is、um, mostly career readiness, then we can. Plug into that, and we can say, well, we have this whole book of、um, curriculum that fit that.、Uh, 
Um, other schools might be more into entrepreneurship and design thinking. Great, we can, we can plug into our entrepreneurship um, cycle there. So we kind of view it as a way to be able to hit all the elementary schools um, and basically whatever the elementary school kids learn as they get older, if we can stay in that district, they'll, they'll get to focus on a, another pillar more, more deeply. And so then it'll roll into middle school and high school. And what the intent is, is for them to be able to have a full JA experience. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think ultimately our goal is to uh, work district by district and, and have, you know, a class in every grade within a district so that a student might have had JA programming all the way through. I mean, that would be ideal for us and, and we're working toward that now. But yeah, that's the idea is that we can build these, these modules and, and kind of get them to where they, where they need to be. I think the curriculum in and of itself is just amazing. I've had an opportunity to get into a third grade class, which was really intimidating. Um, and the curriculum was so well drawn out mm -hmm. that even if I've never taught a class in my life, the guides and the activities that they put into place for the kids, just, just amazing. So what I thought was very valuable was in this third grade class, we taught them about how to balance a checkbook, right? So really bringing them to the basics of how finances are, are managed yep. at the very basic level. Yep. Um, those experiences are amazing. Tell me about the volunteer base, people who get into your classrooms. How do they get to you? Where do you find them? Absolutely. So uh, as we mentioned earlier, we, we depend on our community partners. So that's one way we get volunteers. Um, so a lot of that involves me getting out there and talking to different companies and, and encouraging them to, to work with us. Otherwise, you know, if people are interested, they can go to our website. There's a link, um, www.jahawaii.org. Uh, there's a link on the bottom to to volunteer and basically what we do is it's basically a sign-up sheet and we add you to our list and we try to find a school in your area maybe it's closer to home on the way home from work or whatever it is that you can work in and um, yeah it, from the experience is really really easy for a volunteer everything's in the kit um, you know we provide all the materials including um, if there's any pens and coloring stuff all that stuff's included crayons so a lot of the activities are hands-on, um, which the kids love. I think if you saw in some of those pictures we posted, they're, they're standing up, they're moving around, they're, they're kind of having fun. Um, so it's a lot of it's hands-on learning um, and using, using games and other things to kind of um, teach, teach economics, which can be kind of boring. Uh, but all of that's included in the kit. So basically once a volunteer gets assigned to a class, we send them the materials they need and, you know, if they have questions, we'll, we'll do some training. But usually they can rip it open, read the, read the little magazine, and they're good to go. Is there opportunity for uh, customization? You know, I think when a lot of our financial professionals, you know, in the community get into a classroom, the connection just comes alive about talking about what they do, about what the passion is, and whether it's banking or financial planning or, or whatever that is. Is there an opportunity? To yeah, absolutely. So every class that we teach, uh, we always encourage the volunteers to weave their story into the curriculum. So we don't want them to just read off the book and just kind of be a robot. That, that defeats the purpose. They're there because they have their own personal experience, whether it be in banking, some of them are HR professionals, some of them are marketing, whatever it is. Um, we want them to weave their experiences into the curriculum and tell stories from their own experience. You know, if they, they're talking about balancing their checkbook, maybe they can talk about, you know, when they're younger, they balance the check and, you know, this happened and they can bring that up and, and teach the kids like, you know, from their own experience. So we do want customization. Um, a lot of the actual customization happens on the teacher level too. Um, sometimes they're constrained by time. So we'll work with the teacher to figure out, well, Okay, we can get through these sections, but maybe we might not hit this one. Uh, for example, that Kala Hill um, program, we actually met with the teacher, and um, we were able to figure out, okay, this stuff she's already covering in another on her own, so maybe we'll take it out to save some time and then and do the rest of the JA curriculum. So, yeah, it's very customizable, but the volunteers is what brings the content alive. It, I mean, we could go and teach the teachers to do it, but getting real-world volunteers who have experience in the field, 
and can share a couple of stories about what they're doing really makes a difference. And so that commitment about an hour or? Yeah, it could be about an hour. Um, it depends. And uh, again, it, it varies on actual the class and the volunteer, what they can provide. Some classes will, will have multiple volunteers cover one class. Um, so if, for instance, we don't think, uh, if it's a five hour or five section class um, and one volunteer can't cover all five, maybe there might be two or three volunteers that can tag team and, and, and finish that out. Um, one of the things that you mentioned to us early on in the interview is that all the classroom materials, curriculum, free. Yes. So whether it's a public school, whether it's a private school, whether it's a private entity that's interested in classes, free? Really? Free. Yes. So we provide all the materials for free again, and plus the volunteers are providing their time uh, to the class. Um, so it's a total benefit for the schools. Uh, we rely heavily on um, our fundraising efforts um, and some grants, community support to, to be able to provide this service to the state. And we feel it's an important service. I mean, we've been around for a long time. Um, and, and I think people kind of forgot or forget about JA sometimes, but you know, we've been there the whole time kind of cranking uh, over the last 60 years. And uh, so a lot of it we depend on a lot of that community support to be able to go to a school and say, hey, look, you don't have to pay for any of these materials. You just carve out some time for us and, and our volunteer and, and we can you know, impact your, your students. A junior achievement is just, just so many things. Um, we're in the classrooms, but there are also other programs that junior achievement does. Can you tell us about some of those other programs? Sure, um, you know, we're in the classrooms. Um, some of the other stuff that we do um, are outside of classrooms, like um, we run a company program in Hilo where it's basically a, a multi-week simulation of, of high school students trying to run their own company from start to finish. Um, gives them a good example, a good taste of what entrepreneurship looks like. Um, but we also do fundraisers um, outside, which, which helps us fund all of these things for free. Um, we have a Hall of Fame dinner in May that's coming up. We also have a, a brewer festival in Kauai. Uh, in April and um, Hilo has the company program and they also have their own fundraiser dinner there. So a lot of our efforts um, outside are doing that and we're always looking to do more. So I think in the next year or two, we'll probably have more activities that involve the wider community. I knew this would happen, but we're running out of time. I also know that you run a job shadow program um, that would give students a great opportunity to get into local businesses. Is that right? Yes. So one of the programs in our uh, work readiness track is the job shadow program and it's a one-day program uh, where we try to bring students to to a company and they get to go and see what people are doing so we're planning to do that with that engineering group it's sort of the career success program plus job shadow we're hoping at the end we can get those kids out to the engineering offices and actually see what an engineer does on a day-to-day -day basis that's awesome i want to give you an opportunity to Tell your audience how to get involved, if it's volunteerism, whether they want to donate, whether they want programming to come into their schools. Please tell us how to get in touch with you. Great. Well, thanks again for having me. Um, you can go to www.jahawaii.org for everything. You can go there to sign up for new programs. If you're an educator, you can go there to make a donation, which is always very appreciative. And um, you can also go there to become a volunteer, which we also need. So. Everything's on our website. Please follow us on social media. Um, we're up there. All of those links are on our website as well. Fantastic. Hey, Nate, congratulations on taking on this endeavor and being committed to educating our young people. Just amazing work that you're doing. Yeah. We are out of time, but again, thank you to Nathan and Junior Achievement of Hawaii for joining us. And a big thank you to the production staff here that does an amazing job. If you would like to be a guest on the show, please hit the like button and subscribe uh, and leave a comment below. Business in Hawaii airs every Thursday at 2 p.m. And we look forward to seeing you here next week.